All right. Well, hello, everyone, <clears throat> and uh, welcome to my, technically, my YouTube version for the 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Although, in reality, this doesn't really have anything to do with the particular Sunday. It's just, this is a golden opportunity for me to throw my head in the ring, so to speak, on uh, the current upcoming election. So, you know, not to preach politics too much. I have an opportunity and I want to take it. So I'm taking it on faith that most people have gotten some decent spiritual advice regarding the coming election. You, yes, you should vote. Yes, you should vote your values. Yes, you should vote for the person you actually think is best for the job. Great, you've heard all that before. I actually have something just a little different to, to lovingly offer uh, as, we, as we gear up for Tuesday as it is. So what it begins with is, I do not know who's going to win. I think it's going to be a very close election. Don't think it's going to be a landslide one way or the other. Uh, I know one thing. I know one thing. Regardless of which way the election goes, there are going to be meltdowns. Absolutely. Grown adults are going to have plenty of temper tantrums. Uh, the supporters of the winning candidate are going to be very sore losers. Excuse me. Supporters of the winning candidate are going to be sore winners. The supporters of the losing candidate will be sore losers. Uh, there'll be plenty on, on both sides of the fence, as it were. And I don't want that for anybody. And I wanted to offer a little something that just kind of reminds us that that's not really what we're called to, the whole temper tantrum, meltdown kind of thing. And it all comes down to... It all comes down to something I recently read in the book of Revelation. Uh, so this is from Understanding the Apocalypse, aka the book of Revelation. And I want to reference the part of the book that is by far the most confusing. Uh, let me see here. So it's chapter 20. So if you've ever read the book of Revelation once or maybe a couple of times without being an expert on it, this is the part that like made you scratch your head. This is the, this is the most difficult part of the book. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key of the bottomless pit. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, who was the devil and Satan, bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the pit. Uh, I saw the souls of those who were beheaded for the testimony of Jesus. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who shares in the first resurrection. And uh, just to just be really, really quick, after the thousand years, Satan escapes from the pit. Battle of good and evil. Uh, good wins. Evil is defeated completely. New heaven, new earth. Roll the credits. End of the story. And it's confusing because you're like, well, that can't literally be how things go. Why would some people be resurrected a thousand years before everybody else? And this book really put it in perspective well, and I'm so grateful for it. Let me just turn to my correct page here. Sorry about that. So John, of the writer of the book of Revelation, saw the first resurrection as baptism. That is what he's referring to. When you are baptized, when you are distinctly a disciple of Christ, you have risen to new life and Satan can no longer harm you. And he goes on to explain here that the martyrs reign with Christ for a thousand years. Uh, da, 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 da. It shows that the martyrs are happy before the resurrection of the dead and the second coming of Jesus. So even in, the, in between time, they are already rejoicing in Christ. And it says that they are assured of specific happiness thanks to a resurrection which anticipates general resurrection. Happiness, a true concrete happiness, must involve the whole person. Hence, there must be a resurrection if the martyrs are to be fully and eternally happy. So I just, I love that. That put it so much in perspective for me. Like, this is what I want in life. And I don't just want it, I want it to be shared with as many people as possible. I want happiness and tranquility, being comfortable in my own skin. I want purpose and fulfillment in my life and all of that. And I want it in such a way that it cannot be taken from me by the world. I want a happiness that resides in me and is not subject 
to all these things that are outside of my control. That is a wonderful gift of our faith. And that's what I want to offer right now. Because if we are truly disciples of Christ, then we should have happiness and contentment and, 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 and peace, tranquility, meaning and purpose and life and all of that. And we should retain all of those things, even if our political candidate loses the election. Even if we get in a car accident and we lose a leg. Even if we get that cancer diagnosis, a tragic death in the family. All these horrible things that the, that the world can dish out. If you belong to Christ, if you are truly his disciple, you have experienced the first resurrection. You have risen above the world to a degree. Battle of good and evil still rages on. We are in the world. We are invested in the world like everybody else, but we are not of the world because we belong to Christ, who is far, far beyond such things. So that is my, that is my message that I, I lovingly offer you, for you to think about before, during, and after the election. Let's not be people who give in to meltdowns and temper tantrums, but let us always be worthy witnesses of Christ, knowing that we belong to him and the world has no real power over us. God bless you all and thank you.